Hey everybody, this is Steve, and the church is ordered for a reason that may surprise you. The church is structured as a hierarchy, and that can make people uncomfortable, especially in a world where we value equality and the dignity of all people. A hierarchy is normally defined as a system or organization in which people or groups are ranked one above the other according to status or authority. So if the church is a hierarchy, does that mean that some people have a higher status than others? Does it mean that some people are more important or better than others? No, because that's not how the church defines hierarchy. The word hierarchy comes from the Greek word hierarchia, and it literally means holy or sacred order. In fact, St. Dionysios the Areopagite calls hierarchy a sacred order in the likeness of God. St. Dionysios, one of the most incredible theologians in the history of the church and one of my personal favorites, wrote two important works on this topic. One on the heavenly hierarchy of the angelic powers and another on the hierarchy of the church. And his explanation is that this sacred ordering, this hierarchy in the church, reflects the way we help each other connect with God. You see, God made the universe and everything in it. And our goal is to connect with God, the source of life, to open our lives to His light and accept His invitation into His kingdom. Yet the light of God is only visible to us as we're prepared to see it. Kind of like physical light is only visible to us depending on the strength of our eyes. This is the reason there's even a hierarchy in the angelic powers, from the cherubim and seraphim down to the archangels and angels. It's not that the cherubim or seraphim are any better than the other angelic orders. They just have a different capacity, a different ability to see God's light, an ability that fits with their role in the salvation of all. So that ability comes with a responsibility. It's their task to share the light of God with the other angelic powers down the hierarchy. Just like it's the task of the archangels and angels to share the light of God with us when they receive it. We see a beautiful symmetry in the hierarchy of the angelic powers. Each of the orders is there to receive God's light and then share it with others. To be illumined while illumining others. To be purified and perfected while purifying and perfecting others. It's actually a great example of what it means to be the bee. To receive God's nectar and then share his honey. And a similar thing happens in the hierarchy of the church. Our bishops receive God's light and pass it on. They lead us in worship during the divine liturgy. They preach and explain the gospel to us. They ordain new clergymen. They lead all the churches in a metropolis or archdiocese. Our presbyters lead us in worship and preach and teach when the bishop is absent. They follow the lead of the bishop and, in turn, lead the people of their parish. And our deacons lead us in prayer, serve the faithful, and assist the presbyters and bishops following their lead. We'll actually go into a bit more detail on the role of the clergy and the vestments they wear in a few episodes, so look out for that. Hierarchy isn't about status or who's better. Our goal is humility, after all. Instead, hierarchy is about our mutual interconnectedness, the way we serve and are served by others, the way we lead and are led by others. And this ordering, this mutual dependence, makes sense because of our differences. As we've said many times, the church is the body of Christ. And a body, of course, is made of many different parts. Eyes and ears, hands and feet, arms and legs. St. Paul discusses this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You should read it. Our eyes aren't any more important than our ears. Our hands aren't any more important than our feet. They each do their own particular job for the benefit of the entire body. And you can think of hierarchy as the way different parts of our body receive nourishment. Our mouths receive food whole. When we swallow, we pass food onto our stomachs, which have to receive the food chewed up. And before this nourishment ends up in the rest of our bodies, it needs to be digested. Our bodies are organized into this order of mutual care and dependence. And in a similar way, the church, the body of Christ, is organized into a sacred order that reflects both God's humility and loving care. Because even though we're all equal, we're not all the same. 
and our differences are opportunities for love and care as we use our strength to help others where they are weak and are humble enough to allow the strength of others to help our weaknesses. We're all called to learn and to teach, to receive and to give, to care and to be cared for, to be thankful for the blessings we receive and then freely give them to others. Because that, our love and connectedness is what hierarchy is truly all about. So let's be the bee and find our place in the sacred order of the church. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2a.